Hello, everyone, to our GTC Day 4. I hope this finds you safe, and I hope that you're taking care of each other. This is going to be a short video because the scenario for today is very short. Uh, it's an interesting one because it kind of focuses around um, using YouTube, and at the same time, it talks about putting YouTube videos into a slideshow. The kicker is, the trick is, and then I remember I warned you that some parts on the test can be a little tricky. Let me go over the parts and then you'll, I'll show you. So it says that it wants us to create a playlist. And in that playlist, we're going to call it um, fun videos. And we're gonna put three fun videos into that playlist. And we're going to make sure that it is unlisted. That way people can find it. Uh, we're going to send that. We're going to share it with good old Principal Brannon at gcelevel1 at gmail.com. Will do. Now, the last thing it says about YouTube is it wants to subscribe to uh, Discovery Channel. Simple enough. We all know how to do that. Uh, and then the last thing it says is to put the Google slideshow that we have created once upon a Google insert. And here's the tricky bit. Insert a YouTube clip from your fun video playlist. Now that may, you know, you might be sitting there going, well, you know, okay, Steve, what's the big deal? Because you can, you can embed the entire playlist. Simple. I mean, you basically just get the URL for it. But that's not what it's asking for. It wants a clip from one of your videos in your playlist. That's what I mean about it being tricky. So don't let it catch you. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go into the YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google. Uh, it is one of the most probably <laughs> biggest money maker for them. Uh, I th I, actually, I think it is. I think it has outpaced search, which of course is... Well, hello. I guess I went to the wrong thing, huh? There we go. Uh, and it's outpaced search in terms of money that it makes. When you go into your YouTube channel, if you have not created a YouTube channel, it's easy enough to do. When you create a YouTube channel, uh, up here in the upper right-hand corner is where the icon will be. That'll either be your face or just a head, depending upon how you set it up. But you go there to your channel, and then you come down here to customize channel. And by the way, you, you uh, do this by default. It creates a channel for you. And once we get here, we want to go to playlist. And we're going to, it's already created a playlist in practice. So we'll just go ahead and I'm going to show you how to do it. And then we'll go back and just use that one because it's so easy right here so you went into channel customize channel playlist and from here you then go new playlist and you can call it we're calling it what fun videos fun videos yay And as you can see, when I come in here, it does a couple of things. First of all, it lets me see what it looks like. I can change up the title. I can change up the description if I need to. I can change how it's listed. And this is the part of the scenario. It doesn't want it to be public. It wants it to be unlisted. Now, how do we put videos into this playlist? We don't need to go back to YouTube and go searching for videos, okay? You can do it all from this part right here. Go down to your three dots, add video. Simple as that. All right, let's see. Let's do um, Planet Song. That's what we're studying in class right now. So I'm going to put Planet Song in here. And let's see. I don't know this one. I can listen to it. You know this. I can click on the little triangle right here and listen to it if I want to. Uh, let's go ahead and just grab this one and throw it in. So I have that one right up here. Let's go find another one. 
because it says three. Let's do fraction song. And we'll go ahead and we will pick one of those. Fraction song for third and fourth grade, sure. Add that. And you see it shows up. And let's do something a little bit uh, in the upper grades. And one of my all-time favorite uh, YouTube video songs, How a Bill Becomes a Law. You're way too young to remember anything about Schoolhouse Rock. But I still think it holds up. I think it still is one of the best places in the world to find um, good, bouncy, good, just good stuff. All right, so here we go. We're going to put that one in there as well. Now we got them. Now it says that we're supposed to share this, share the playlist with you know who. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on the little icon that represents share. And I'm going to have to share it through email. So I'm going to slide over here and find the email. Ding. And now it pops open in my Gmail account. And now I'm going to put in GCE level one. ADM at Gmail. Dot com. There you go, Principal Brandon. Enjoy my playlist. Now, before we go too much further, we need to go back into, and I kind of blew myself away there, but what, I, what it's asking you to do in our next part is it wants you to put in a clip. Remember, this is the tricky bit. So I'm going to go into the playlist and I'm going to open up one of these. I'm going to open up my schoolhouse rock because I love my schoolhouse rock. <laughs> okay. I'm going to copy that. Simple as that. I'm just a bill. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go into our Google Classroom. We're going to open up our Class Drive folder. And we are going to go open up our exam materials. And we're going to go to our Google Slides 101. And so what it's asking us to do is to insert a Google clip from your playlist on your first slide. Sure, not a problem. So I'm gonna click right there, and I can do this a bunch of ways, can't I? The easiest way that I know of is paste. Make sure you hit return. Done. Isn't that easy? And that's all there is to it. And now, if you were to go into present mode, this will be a link back to that video. Present, click. There's Bill again. Simple. Just so simple. Okay. Now, what do we want to do after we've done that? Uh, I think it says to go into slide number two and to leave a comment. Well, you know how to do that as well now. So you basically go to, you can go to this again. You can do this a whole bunch of ways. You can go to slide two. You can come up here and click on the comment. You can right click on the slide two and come down to the comment, comment, and there it is. Let's see, it wants us to say in this, should we add a video here also? Done. Take out my comment because it doesn't have a comment in there. And comment. There you go. That was scenario number four. Essentially, all we did, oh, we forgot to.
to do the Discovery Channel. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so B-I-S-C-O-V-E-R-Y, Discovery, C-H-A-N-N-E-L, Discovery Channel, bang. And I'm already subscribed. But you know what to do. You'd go over here and you'd subscribe by clicking on subscribe. Now, it doesn't say anything in here uh, about the, you know, notification icon. So I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to mess with my bell over here. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. And I have subscribed. Done. Told you it was simple. This is probably the easiest one that we'll have for the entire uh, training is doing the YouTube thing. Just remember, remember, you can do everything from your channel. And now, let me make something clear here because you may not be a, a person who has a channel. And that's okay because in the test, remember, everything they do in the test, they set up. So they'll have that channel set up. And so all you're doing is you're going into it, your channel, you're going to find playlist. You're going to go over here to customize playlist. And then from here, you can build that new, uh, you know, playlist they're asking you to do. So don't freak out if you're not a YouTube channel person. You don't have to have it for the test. The test will give you its own channel for you to play with. If you are a YouTube channel person, and if you do use it with kids in your classroom, do me a big favor. Come over here to the icon that represents you, whether you got a picture in there or not. Come down. And I, what I want you to do is I want to make sure that you have turned on the following. So here we are. We're in channel. I'm going to come all the way down here, and I'm going to make sure I have my restricted mode turned on. The reason why you want to do this, if you're using your YouTube channel for school, this will stop kids from going from the videos that you post to somewhere that may be inappropriate. Now, you're using the Google filter. You're using what YouTube and Google have determined is inappropriate. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. In JCPS, you'll be going through the filter filter that's in JCPS. So not too much to worry about, but just, you know, belts and suspenders being overly cautious. Turn that on. Let's go back to our content and let's do our questions for today. Mr. Jones has invited, Ms. Jones, excuse me, has divided her class into groups to work on different geography projects. Great idea. Great idea. Um, my Here's my basic take on Google Slides in the classroom. I would use it as a tool for managing, as a tool for organization. Um, please, oh God, please don't stand there and run a Google slide presentation for 30, 40 minutes at kids. Why? Put it in the classroom. Tell them to go look at it. Then bring them back and have them discuss. But where Google Slides stands up and begs to be used is in collaborative groups. What are some of the benefits of using slides in a classroom? This is one of those things where you get to check, you know, all the answers that apply. Students can import and edit, edit a video directly in a slide without additional software. Nope, can't do that. Students can export to complete a presentation as a flash animation. Nope, can't do that. Students can make their own copy of the slide deck from a shared link. Yes. Students can collaborate on the slide deck at the same time. Yes. Students can browse and copy slides created by any student at any other school, only if they have the permissions to do that. So that one, I don't think I would check. A student comes to you having deleted six of his 12 slides in a presentation. Unfortunately, those slides cannot be recovered in revision history due to slide revision hierarchy. That's not false. You can get them all back. On a single slide in a presentation, how can you reveal steps for a science lab process one step at a time? <laughs> Using animations, duh. So your animations is where you go in, and they're really limited. Boy, are they really limited. Let me go back in here. Uh, let's see. It's under tools. 
you just there's just not a whole lot of stuff that you can do uh transitions you can do and you know that that's an object animations that's about it folks so you know which is okay because if you think about remember all those horrible powerpoints you've had to sit through where stuff is flying in and twirling around and all of that you know it's one of those things where yay you don't have to put up with that. Here's one I did want to show you. I forgot to. Under tools, here's that good old voice uh, type thing again. But you'll notice that it allows you to put it. You can sit here and, and narrate your speaker notes uh, before you do do a presentation. You may have to do a presentation for um, the faculty or your principal. Um, you can go down here and put that in. Here's rule number one about using Google Slides, PowerPoints, things like that. The whole point of it is it's in its name. Present. It's to present results. It's to present information. You do not use it to teach with. Now, that might be a fine line, but it really is the truth. On a single slide in a presentation, well, we just did that one, animation. How can you insert videos into a presentation? Upload a video from your hard drive? Yep. So embed a vi URL the video stored in Google Drive? Yep. Click insert and select video from the menu? Yep. Import your presentation into, you into YouTube? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> that one doesn't work. Animations can be used to control the sequence in which objects appear on a slide in a Google slide. Yep. Speaker notes are not allowed in presentations on Google Sites. False. We just showed it to you which can be inserted into a Google slide presentation, text, images, YouTube video, D, all of the above. Students are compiling individual slides into collaborative class presentation. How can the teacher copy these slides into a master presentation? She can do it either in one of two ways. She can share it, uh, they can share their presentations on a Google group, or she can just use the import slides feature and just Roll them all into this one giant presentation she's going to do. Speaker notes are not allowed in presentation. I don't know why that's in here again. It's false. How can your students embed a presentation on a web page? Woo! And share it with the world. Look how easy this is. So the, the, what we're going to and we'll be going over sites. I think on Monday. I'm not sure of next week. Uh, sites is the Google answer to the whole, um, you know, creating stuff for the web. And all you do is go down here. And then you go publish to the web, and then you get these. By the way, this is a question on the test. One of the questions is, um, can there's, there's variations on it, but one of them is, can you uh, do the following things with your presentation on the web. And if you create your presentation and click these two boxes, you can do just about anything. So in other words, it'll start the slideshow as soon as the player loads. It'll restart the slideshow after the last slide. Always a good idea. And there are two ways of doing that, of putting it out there on the web. Um, and we'll talk about this when we talk about sites. One of the best things you can do is when you do the embed, you can make it nice and big. Um, you can auto advance it if you want to, um, which, you know, is nice because it will run through the slides. It takes the human eye about six seconds to read something. I'll do 10 just to be on the safe side. And then all I have to do is copy this and put it into my site's uh, location where I want it to go and poof. My slideshow is now on the web for the world to see. Like I said, we'll do that next week. And that's it. Flashcards for Google Sites. I got a bunch of flashcards in here for you. Um, let's see. We know what a slide is, thanks. We know what a presentation is. Icon, we kind of know that. App, we kind of know that. Theme, how is it? This background design for slides in a presentation. Well, duh. Title, we know that. Image, we know that. Insert, we know that. Select. Rename, let's keep going. Upload, download, wow. Tool, visual aid, Google Slides. Let's see how it describes it. 
Create and edit polished presentation in your browser. No software required. You can work on it at the same time so everyone has the latest version. True. Transitions, we know what they are. Text box, we know what it is. Word art, we now know what that is. Layout, we know what that is. Animation, template. By the way, the template is a way for you to control uh, for kids. Let me show you. You can create a template, and that way then when kids um, want to create their own, uh, into two minds of this, you can create a template and send it to kids um, and say, use this template. I'm, I'm a two minds of that because, you know, allowing kids to be creative is kind of cool. But at the same time, I get it. If what you're really trying to focus on is what they're trying or the information that they're putting out there, fine. So all I have to do, and you know what I have to do, is I go in, I create this thing, and then I share it. There you go. Anybody who can link can view it. Nope. Anybody who has this link can edit. And now what I would do is I would put in my people that would represent my one group that might be doing this. Send it. Create it again. Send it to another group. Send it to another group. Send it to another group. Simple. You know that. You know all about that by now. Web browser, we know that. Uniform resource locator. That's the box at the top. <laughs> Menu bar, we know what that is. Enhance, etiquette, file, stop motion animation. What in the world's that got to do with anything? Okay, animation captured one frame at a time. Okay. Publish. Okay. You studied all 30 terms. Thank you. There we go. That is scenario number four. Uh, as I said, probably the easiest one in the whole test. You won't have any trouble with it. Just make sure that when you do that, um, create that playlist, you do everything within the playlist. Don't leave the playlist and go find the videos. Don't do any of that. Just add the videos through the playlist. It's much simpler, much cleaner. You can change it to unlist it. You know, it's a time saver. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, oh, by the way, I forgot. You're going to take this creation that we just did today with these videos and all of this. Make sure you go up and you do the copy the URL of it. Uh, you come in, you go into your assignment list. You go into the link to the assignment. You're doing such a great job with this. I'm, you know, kind of forgot to show it one more time. Um, I've had questions about when I put it in, does it show up? Yes. Just like that. Okay. So if you put it in the way I just showed you, it'll always show up and then you submit. Okay. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we do a deep dive into sheets. Woo. This is where we will do a really good, long, hard look at sheets. Um, not too much. There's not a lot here. There's only four, three tasks. But boy, there's a lot that's packed into this. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. As always, if you have comments, questions, concerns, 502-457-2937. And as always, as always, stay safe. Take care of each other. See you tomorrow.